بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. We praise Allah subhanahu wa taala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. his household, his companions. We ask Allah to bless every one of us, to grant us all goodness, to grant us ease, to grant us good health, to grant us the ability to worship him in the way that he would like to be worshipped, to grant us the ability to follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not just when it suits us, but in fact, in every aspect of our life, may Allah strengthen us. Each one of us is weak. We try our best to become better people. We need to move forward as quick as possible because as the clock is ticking, we are getting closer to our grave. And the opportunities to gain closeness to Allah shall come to an end. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those who can continue doing good. Ameen. My brothers, my sisters, those who may be listening right now and those who will listen to this later, you know that marriage has been made very easy in Islam. There is a proposal from one side and acceptance from the other in the presence of the representatives as well as the witnesses and at the same time mention is made of the gift that is given from the groom to the bride that is known as mahar. Something very simple. The officiation of a nikah does not take more than two minutes. The reasoning behind this is divine. One of the reasons is that nobody should have an excuse to commit sin because it has been made easy. So remember one thing, every time you or anyone else makes it difficult for your children or for anyone else to get married, you are sinful. The idea and the planning and the divine wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dictates that you facilitate a nikah. You facilitate marriage. Your son wants to get married, make it easy. Your daughter wants to get married, make it easy. If they are growing up, encourage them to get married. The Prophet ﷺ encouraged, very strong encouragement. Ya ma'ashara shababa man istata'a min kumul ba'ata falyata zawwaj. O youth, he says, whoever is able and capable must get married. That's what he said. You are able, you are capable. You have nothing preventing you, stopping you, you must get married. So it became a sunnah. And not just an ordinary sunnah, such a sunnah that the Prophet ﷺ, it is Muhammad wasallam actually made mention of it that he himself got married, he has encouraged others to marry, so it is stressed, it is muakkad, it is something that you should endeavor. It is an ibadah, and it is not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy. It's not a joke to get married. It's exciting initially. Ask those who've been married already for a while, how the excitement either increases or decreases. And depending on what type of excitement there was, sometimes the type of excitement also changes with the changing of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us happiness, contentment, the ability to sacrifice. There comes a time in life when you realize that you know what? I need to slow down. I need to concentrate on what Allah gave me. I need to make sure that I've spent time with my children. I need to make amends with my relationships with my family members, my in-laws and everybody else. And I need to become a more disciplined person. Brothers, sisters, without discipline, you will not be successful in the dunya, nor in the akhirah. Why do I say the akhirah? Because to read salah, you need discipline. To fulfill your zakah, you need lots of discipline. To go for hajj, you need discipline. To be married, you need discipline. You need to be disciplined. No discipline, what type of success are you going to achieve? This is beautiful, beautiful that Allah has made it compulsory for us to pray early in the morning. Discipline. You get up, you are a mu'min. Mu'min is automatically disciplined. That's the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So getting married has been simplified. It's been made easy. 
and it is not according to your whims and fancies when you are a parent. Do you know what that means? This is a powerful statement that many people don't like to hear. When I'm a father and I have children, when I want to get them married, I do not follow my whims and fancies. I follow what Allah said and what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said. That is when I'm successful. When you get married, you pray for children. Today, mashallah, we will be witnessing the officiation of the nikah of brother Mas'ud. And mashallah, tabarakallah, I am honored to be here today because I look at him as a son. And I look at him as someone whom, inshallah, we have great hopes that by the will of Allah, he will fulfill as best as he can the rights and the duties that are upon him. And the same applies to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us. What do we do? We make dua. Oh Allah, bring them together. Barakallahu lakuma, baraka alaykuma, jama'a baynakuma fi khair, etc, etc. That dua includes a dua for good offspring, good children. May Allah bless you with pious offspring. Amen. We make a dua every time someone gets married that may Allah bless you with pious offspring who will be the coolness of your eyes. So we're excited. After some time, no children yet. Two types of people. Some will tell you, we're not starting a family yet. We want to enjoy honeymoon a little bit, you know. They will tell you that straight, live. Brother, it's been four years. What type of honeymoon are you talking about? Subhanallah. May Allah grant us ease. However, it is not a correct question to ask people, why don't you have children? That question is wrong. As a Muslim, you don't ask someone that question. When are you having children is not a question of a Muslim. Why? Because it can be the most hurtful question to those who cannot have children. It is Allah. لِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذُّكُورُ أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا Allah is the owner of everything. Allah is the owner of everything in the heavens and on earth. He creates what He wants. Some He gives them only to having children, males. As children, some he gives them only females as children. Who gives? Allah gives. Some he gives them both male and female, and some he does not give them neither male nor female. They don't have. So who is the giver? It is Allah. So when you say someone, when are you having children? It is an insult. My brother, unless it is your own child and you know that they were planning not to have children, you might want to discuss it in private. But trust me, don't ask people, when are you having children? However, when they do have the children, those children belong to Allah. Who do they belong to? Allah. We all belong to Allah. When someone passes away, what do we say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. You know what it means? We all belong to Allah and we all are going to return to Allah. Who do you belong to? Allah. Who do your children belong to? Allah. So why did Allah give Test me? By giving me something that would make me happy, I'm the father. You are only temporarily a custodian of the child for Allah to see whether you fulfill what Allah wants or you want to do what you want. So as the child is born, what type of name do you give the child? How do you dress your little baby? The baby is innocent. The baby doesn't say, Dad, dress me in this and that because it can't even speak in the early stages. How you dress a child is your test. How you speak to the child, your test. What type of words are the first words that you teach the child, your test. What type of upbringing you want to deliver initially, your test. And as the child grows older, 
Allah takes away your control of the child in front of your eyes. Baby is born, I have almost full control. Ultimate control is Allah's. But I have a lot. I change the nappy, I decide the clothes, I decide the name, I decide so much. I will carry, I will move, I will give, I will take, I will buy the toys and the child will do whatever. As the child grows older, I don't want to wear this anymore. Why? I don't like it. Oh, first time in your life, you're talking about the clothes. Wow, wow. This toy also, I don't want it. I want that remote control car. <laughs> wow, wow. What is this? It is Allah showing you your control is diminishing. That's what it is. When they grow a little bit older, you send them to the school. They have no debate. I went to school. My father sent me to the school. After a while, I don't want to go to this college. I want to go to that college. Hey, hey, hey. Where did you develop a mouth from? MashaAllah, Allah gave it to him. Allah gave it to her. When they were young, you fed them whatever they were eating. As they grow older, I'm not eating. Why? I don't like this food. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah. Look. What happened? How whatever you raise the child upon from the early stages is what will have an impact on the child. Then there comes a day when the ultimate decision is to be made. What is it? To get married. To get married. Do you know that marriage in most cases determines your future? Do you know that? Your choice of a spouse makes you or breaks you. Your choice of a spouse makes you or breaks you. It's a fact. So choose well. When the young man is choosing, the young woman is choosing, we need to teach them the guidelines given by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see a pretty woman, mashallah is the word. You know that, isn't it? But some of the clever ones, they say, inshallah. May Allah forgive us. Okay. When you see someone, you lower your gaze. But that is not the only quality. You see, mashallah, good looking. You need to determine the level of faith, the level of religion. You need to determine that. You might want to say, subhanallah, this person is from a wealthy home. You might want to say this person is from... A wealthy home that might be attractive to some of the lazy lads. Wow, she's from a wealthy home. If I marry, I can be wow, looked after by my father-in-law. Good idea. MashaAllah, brilliant. It might be an attraction. No problem. It's not haram. But that's not the only thing you should look at. Wow. What else? She might be from a good family. Nice name they have in community. The minute some names you hear them, everyone says, wow, I know that family, big family, mashallah. You know? But that's not the only thing you should look at. It's not haram to look at it, but success does not lie in looking at those three things. However, the overriding factor is the level of deen. What is the deen? Deen is made up of two things. Your relationship with Allah and your relationship with the rest of the creatures of Allah. So if you have a good relation with Allah, you fulfill your ibadah. You are a pious person, for example, or you have some sense of religion, consciousness of Allah, mashallah. And your character and conduct is brilliant, responsible person. So you have a responsibility. You, if, you, if you show that you are responsible, wow, you are sought after. If you show that you are conscious of Allah, you are sought after. If you show that your character and conduct is exemplary, how you talk to people, how you carry yourself, you are sought after. That should be the deciding factor. What this means is, mashallah, you saw someone really handsome, but they've got no deen, drop it. You saw someone very wealthy, they've got no deen, drop it. You saw someone handsome and wealthy or pretty and wealthy, they don't have deen, drop it. You will come across someone who is good looking and they have deen. Deen beautifies you more than anything else. Your character, your conduct will develop as time passes by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now comes 
Sorry, that was the advice given to the young people getting married. When you are choosing, these are the things you look at. Now comes the parents. When your children are getting married, make it easy. Don't make it difficult. How do I make it easy? There are many ways of getting married. There is not one way in Islam. Many ways. Proposal can come from this side. The girl's family can insist or they can propose. Please, we have a daughter. We are interested. It's very good to do that. Nothing wrong at all. Sometimes the boy's side can come and say, you know, we have a son. We are interested in your daughter. Please. They can say yes. They can say no. If they say no, it's not the end of the world. You can push off somewhere else. You might get something better. Subhanallah. But it needs to start. And sometimes after 10, 15 requests, one whom you are supposed to be with, they will agree, accept, and you move forward in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's not wrong for your son or daughter to come to you and to say, Dad, I want to marry someone. Hey, who are you to come and suggest you want to marry? Are you not a good girl? You're a Muslim. How could you do that? Astaghfirullah. My father, my beloved parents, wake up and smell the coffee. We are Muslimin. There is nothing wrong in a woman herself showing interest to marry someone. Don't be embarrassed. Take it up. Allah is going to ask you if what they are asking you to do is fair and acceptable in the eyes of Allah. Why do you want to block it? Why do you want to stop it? Your duty and your job is to facilitate what Allah has allowed. Sometimes we fail dismally because we did not adopt what Allah said. We are following our whims and fancies and our desires. We are following our whims and fancies. Wallahi. And Allah says, hang on, I gave you a child. You knew that you had to bring this child up. You knew that you had to follow our way. But when it came to marriage, you did not do that. You followed your own way. What did you do? You destroyed the child's life in a lot of cases. Destroyed the child. I have come across thousands of cases where people after marriage, they say, and I'm talking about thousands, not hundreds. It used to be tens, then hundreds, now it's thousands. They say, I really didn't want to marry this person, but my father pushed me to do it. How? I think that father is going to stand on the day of judgment. He's not going to have an answer to Allah. I forced. What did you force? What did you do? How would you feel if your wife told you or your husband told you 10 years later, I never wanted to marry you. It was a big mistake. I was forced by my mother or my father. And we think that is Islam. And we think that is what Allah wants from us. You guide them. You were supposed to have guided them. You did not play a role in their life until the last minute. And then you came up and you want to suddenly push your way. Had if you had a good relationship from the beginning with your child, they would have made you a part of their decision from the beginning. But no, you did not want that. What you wanted is you wanted that you just come where it suits you in their lives, impose certain matters and walk off, make their lives difficult. And Allah says, you know, facilitate it. You facilitate it, it will become halal. Another problem we have in our communities across the globe, Muslims are guilty. What do we do? We delay the nikah. The people are ready to get married. Girl side is happy. Boy side is happy. When are you getting married? After two years. Two years for what? That two years is a window period for zina and adultery and nothing else. That's why you are not supposed to delay the nikah. Once it's ready, just like janazah. Janazah is there. What are you waiting for? No, two years. Family hasn't come. They are coming next week. If it was that they are coming soon, few hours, maybe perhaps we can wait. But you want to wait for one week? For what? Which Allah has told you to do that. Are you following what I'm saying? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So don't delay the nikah for no reason. We need to know this. It is very important. It is a powerful message. Because it's not up to me, it's up to Allah. Allah, cho Allah told me what to do. I need to follow what Allah says. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, if your child is really going astray and they are really doing something that is not even acceptable in the eyes of Allah, then you might want to be a little bit firm in the way you guide them. That's not wrong, but unreasonable. I've come across people who grew up together, 
The child wants to marry either, sometimes it's even a family member, sometimes it's a business associate, sometimes it's someone, just because they have a different origin, ethnicity, etc. They just say, no, I'm not interested. No ways. No ways. And you don't know the boy and the girl have had a relationship for so long before they involved you in it because they were scared of you. You don't even know that. And you just came in suddenly one day and you said, no. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and guidance and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. I have spoken for 20 minutes, more than 20 minutes. But you know this topic, no matter how much you say, it's very interesting. There's only one problem. Every time I speak about marriage, I see the older people looking at me like, ah, oh, too late, man. You should have spoken this when I was younger, you know. Now it's unfortunate. I am already so old, you know. And they look at you with so much of desperation in the eyes. I pray that Allah give us happiness. I pray that Allah give us joy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from among those whom when we look at our spouses, we just feel this coolness of our eyes. We feel so happy. We feel really, you know, your spouses sacrifice a lot. That sacrifice over time becomes the point of love. Do you realize this? As we grow older, all of us, we lose our shape and our size and we sometimes lose our looks. You have to, you become old, you wrinkle, you become gray. But you look at your spouse with all that gray and you have so much of love for them because they sacrifice their lives for you and for your children and so much more. Now you are maturing. You become a person who's more responsible. You start loving people for the right reasons. It's no longer about outward beauty. It's more about the inward beauty. I want to cry when I'm talking because wallahi, I'm sure that those who are slightly older, they relate with what I'm saying right now. Wallahi, pray for your spouses. Make dua. May Allah bless them. May Allah grant them goodness. May Allah grant, accept from them all their sacrifice. Somebody's daughter, look after her. In the case of the wife, somebody's son, respect him, look after him as well. Look after each other, respect each other. Don't use abusive language. I want to end with one piece of advice for the groom and the bride today. In the verses the Imam is going to read, you will hear one verse, Kulu qawlan sadida. Utter that which is upright. Be careful because 95% of the problems in marriages are to do with the way you use your tongue. Use your tongue wisely. Go out of your way to say beautiful words, lovely words to your spouse. Every day tell them how beautiful, how pretty they are, how lovely, how much you miss them, how much you love them, how much you care for them, and let it happen. You know, we are living in a generation where to tell them 10 times a day is no longer enough. I think between last year and this year, it's shut up by two, 12 times a day. By next year, it will be 14 times. And as the time passes, you will have to have an hourly message. I love you. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. And it won't just be I love you. There are so many ways of saying I love you. I adore you. What else? We can come up with all sorts of statements of affection. Today, the world is filled with so much of materialism and it is being advertised and marketed in a very aggressive way that we need to reassure one another. Long back, reassurance was not needed. The fact that I came home, I smiled, Salaam Alaikum, that was enough. That Salaam, I promise you, when you walk in the house, and this, this happens, I hope it still happens to some, it should be happening to a lot of us. As you enter your house, you see your spouse, you smile, you say, Salaam Alaikum, MashaAllah. That means I really love you. They read into the statement. In actual fact, it means peace be upon you. But the way you came and you were so happy and you smiled, they did not need you to say, I love you. The fact that they saw you, Salaam Alaikum. And that's your wife, Subhanallah. That's your husband. And they look back at you, Wa Alaikum Salaam. MashaAllah. It was enough. The kids never ever saw husband and wife or father and mother hugging before in the older generation. But they did more than just hugging with their statements, with their words, with their expressions. The problem with us is we lack all of this. So therefore, we need to keep on reminding one another. May Allah bless you all. It's a beautiful topic and I'm glad that everyone here is smiling at least. Because Wallahi, we can do much more to improve the condition of our homes. I want to end with a little prayer to say, 
may Allah bless you both. May Allah bless whatever He gives you. Inshallah, may He make it filled with blessing. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all goodness. And every one of us, those who are married, may Allah grant you happiness. Those who are not married, may Allah grant you spouses who will be the coolness of your eyes. Those who have children, may they be the coolness of your eyes. Those who don't have children, may Allah bless you with good offspring. Ameen.